from around the globe. It's theCUBE with digital coverage of enterprise data automation. An event series brought to you by IO Tahoe. Hi everybody, we're back. We're talking about enterprise data automation. The hashtag is data automated and we're going to really dig into data migrations. Data migrations are risky, they're time consuming and they're expensive. Youssef Khan is here. He's the head of partnerships and alliances at IO Tahoe. Coming again from London. Hey, good to see you, Youssef. Thanks very much. Thank you, Dave. Great time. So your role is, is interesting. We're talking about data migrations. You're kind of head of partnerships. What is your role specifically and, and how is it relevant to what we're going to talk about today? Uh, well, I work with um, the various businesses um, uh, such as uh, cloud companies, systems integrators, uh, companies that sell operating systems, middleware, uh, all of whom are often quite well embedded within uh, company IT infrastructures and have existing relationships. Um, because what we do fundamentally makes uh, migrating to the cloud easier and data migration easier, there are lots of businesses that are interested in partnering with us and we're interested in, in partnering with. So let's set up the problem a little bit and then I want to get into some of the data. You know, I just said that migrations are, are risky, time consuming, expensive. They're, they're oftentimes a, a blocker for organizations to really get value out of data. Why is that? Uh, I think, I mean, all migrations have to start with knowing the facts about your data. Uh, and you can try and do this manually but when you have an organization that may have been going for decades or longer, uh, they will probably have a pretty large legacy data estate. So they'll have everything from on-premise mainframes. They may have stuff which is partly in the cloud, uh, but they probably have hundreds, if not thousands of applications and potentially hundreds of different data stores. Um, now their understanding of what they have uh, is often quite limited because you can try and draw manual maps uh, but they're out of date very quickly. Every time the data changes, the manual map's out of date. Uh, and people obviously leave organizations all the time. Uh, so the kind of tribal knowledge that gets built up is, is limited as well. So you can try and map all that manually. You, you might need a, a DBA, database analyst, or, or, or a, a business analyst, and they might go in and explore the data for you. But doing that manually is, is very, very time consuming. This can take teams of people months and months. Um, or you can use automation just like Webster Bank did with IO Tahoe. And they managed to do this with a relatively small team uh, in a time frame of days. Yeah, we talked to Paula from Webster Bank, awesome discussion. So I want to dig in to this migration and let's, let's pull up a graphic. <clears throat> It'll talk about, we'll talk about what a typical migration project looks like. So what you see here is it's very detailed, I know, it's a bit of an eye test, but let me, let me call your attention to some of the key aspects of this. Uh, yeah. And then Yusef, I want you to chime in. So at the top here, you see that area graph, that's operational risk for a typical migration project. And you can see the, the timeline and the, and the milestones. That blue bar is the time to task. So you can see the second step data analysis. You're talking 24 weeks. So, you know, very time consuming. And then yeah. for, for, let's not get dig into the stuff in the middle, the, the, the fine print, but there's some real good detail there. But go down to the bottom. That's labor intensity in the, in the bottom. And, and you can see high is that sort of brown. And you, and you can see a number of data analysis, data staging, data prep, the trial, the implementation, post-implementation fixtures, the transition to to BAU, which I think is business as usual. Those are all very labor intensive. So mm. what are your takeaways from this typical migration project? What do we need to know, Youssef? I mean, I think the, the key thing, Dave, is, is um, when you don't understand your data up front, it's very difficult to scope and to set up a project uh, because you go to business stakeholders and decision makers and you say, okay, we, we want to migrate uh, these data stores. Uh, we want to put them in the cloud uh, most often. Uh, but actually, you probably don't know how much data is there. You don't necessarily know how many applications it relates to. Uh, you don't know the relationships between the data. You don't know the flow of the data, so the direction in which the data is going between different data stores and tables. Uh, so you, you start from a position where you have pretty high risk. And to try to alleviate that risk, you probably stack your project team with lots and lots of people to do the next phase, which is analysis. 
And so you've set up a project uh, which has got a pretty high cost. The bigger the project, the more people, the heavier the governance, obviously. Uh, and then they're then in the phase where they're trying to do lots and lots of manual analysis. Um, manual analysis, as, as we all know, uh, and the idea of trying to relate uh, data that's in different data stores, relating individual tables and columns, very, very time consuming, uh, expensive if you're hiring in resource from consultants or systems integrators externally. You, you might need to buy or to use third party tools. The, as I said earlier, the, the people who understand some of those systems may have left a while ago. Um, so you're, you're in a high risk, high cost situation from the off. Um, and the same thing sort of develops through the project. Um, what what you find with uh, IOTAHO is that we're able to automate a lot of this process from the very beginning uh, because we can do the initial data discovery run, for example, automatically. So you very quickly have an automated um, view of the data, a data map and the data flow that's been generated automatically. Much less time and effort and much less cost ultimately. Okay, so let, I want to bring back that, that first chart and, and I want to call your attention to, the, again, that area graph, the blue mm -hmm. bars, and then down below that labor intensity. And now mm -hmm. let's bring up the, the, the same chart, but mm -hmm. with a sort of an automation injection yeah. in here. And, and now, yeah. so you now see the sort of, it's called sort of accelerated by IO Tahoe. Okay, great, and we're going to yeah. talk about this, mm -hmm. but look what happens to the operational risk a, a dramatic reduction in that 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 graph, and then look at the bars. The bars, those blue yeah. bars. You know, data analysis went from 24 weeks down to four weeks, and then look at the labor intensity. The it was all these were high. Data analysis, data staging, data prep, trial, post implementation fixtures, and transition to BAU. All of those went from high labor intensity. So you, we've now attacked that and gone to low labor intensity. Explain yeah. how that magic happened. Uh, let's, let's take a, a, the example of uh, a data catalog. So every large uh, enterprise uh, wants to have uh, some kind of repository where they put all their understanding about their data, an enterprise data catalog, if you like. Um, imagine trying to do that manually. You'd need to go into every individual data store. You need a DBA uh, and a business analyst for each data store. They'd need to do an extract of the data. They need to look at the tables individually. They need to cross-reference that with other data stores and schemas and tables. You'd probably end up with the mother of all Excel spreadsheets. Uh, and it would be a very, very difficult exercise to do. I mean, in fact, one of our reflections as we automate lots of, the, lots of these things is um, it, it accelerates the ability to automate, but in some cases, it also makes it possible for enterprise customers with legacy systems, um, take banks, for example, they quite often uh, end up staying on mainframe systems that they've had in place for decades uh, and not migrating away from them because they're not able to actually do the work of understanding the data, deduplicating the data, deleting data that isn't relevant, and then confidently going forward to migrate. So they stay where they are with all the attendant problems of systems that are out of uh, support. Go back to the data catalog example. Um, whatever you discover in data discovery has to persist in a tool like a data catalog. Uh, and so we automate data catalogs, including our own. We, we can also feed others, uh, but we have our own. Um, the only alternative to this kind of automation is to build out this very large project team of business analysts, of DBAs, project managers, process analysts, to gather all the data to understand that the process of gathering the data is correct, to put it in the repository, to validate it, et cetera, et cetera. We've gone into organizations and we've seen them uh, ramp up teams of 20, 30 people, costs of uh, two, three, four million pounds a year, uh, and a time frame of 15 to 20 years just to try and get uh, a, a data catalog done. And that's something that we can typically do in, in a time frame of months, if not weeks. And it's the difference is using automation. And if you do what I've just described in this manual situation, you make migrations to the cloud prohibitively expensive. Whatever saving you might make from shutting down your legacy data stores um, will get eaten up by the cost of doing it, unless you go with a more automated approach. Okay, so the automated approach uh, reduces risk because you're, you're, you're not going to, 
you know, you're going to stay on project plan, ideally. You know? It's all these out-of-scope expectations that come up with the manual processes that kill you in the rework. Um, and then that data, data catalog, people are afraid that their, their family jewels data is not going to make it you know, through to the other side. So, so that's something that you, you're, you're addressing. And then yeah. you're also not boiling the ocean. You're really taking yeah. the, the pieces that are critical and the stuff you don't need, you don't have to pay for. Uh, as exactly. part of this process. It's a very good point. I mean, one of the other things that we do and we have specific uh, features to do is to automatically uh, analyze data for uh, duplication at a row level or a record level and redundancy at, at a column level. So as you say, before you go into a migration process, you, you, you can then understand actually this stuff here is duplicated. We don't need it. Quite often, if you put data in the cloud, you're paying, uh, obviously, for storage space or for compute time. The more data you have in there that's duplicated, that's pure cost you should take out before you migrate. Again, if you're trying to do that process of understanding what's duplicated manually off tens or hundreds of data stores, it will take you months, if not years. You use machine learning to do it in an automatic way, uh, and it's much, much quicker. I mean, there's, there's another thing I'd say about... Um, the net cost and benefit of IO Tahoe. Every organization we work with uh, has a lot of money, existing sunk cost in their IT. So they'll have ERP systems like Oracle or Data Lakes, which they've spent good time and money investing in. But what we do by enabling them to transition everything to their strategic future repositories is accelerate the value of that investment and the time to value of that investment. Um, so we, we're trying to help people get value out of their existing investments and, and data estate, um, close down the things that they don't need and enable them to go to a, a kind of brighter and more efficient future. Well, and I think as well, you know, once you're able to, and this is a journey, we know that, but once you're able to go live uh, and you're infusing sort of a data mindset, a, a data oriented culture, I know it's somewhat buzzwordy, but when you when you see it in organizations, you know it's real. And, and what happens is you dramatically reduce that end to end cycle time of going from data to actually insights. Data is plentiful, but insights aren't. And, and that is what's going to drive competitive advantage over the next decade and beyond. Yeah, definitely. And you can only really do that if you get your data estate cleaned up in the first place. Um, I've worked with and managed uh, teams of data scientists, big data engineers, uh, business analysts, people who are pushing out dashboards and are trying to build uh, machine learning applications. You'll know, you know, the biggest frustration for lots of them and the thing that they spend far too much time doing is trying to work out what the right data is uh, and cleaning data, uh, which really you don't want a highly paid data scientist doing with their time. But if you sort out your data estate in the first place, get rid of deduplication, uh, perhaps migrate to a cloud store where things are more readily accessible uh, and it's easy to build connections and to use native machine learning tools, you're well on the way up the data maturity curve um, and you can start to use some of those more advanced applications. Yusuf, what are some of the prerequisites, maybe the top you know, few that, or two or three that I need to uh, understand as a customer to really be successful here? I mean, there's there's, is it skill sets? Is it is it mindset, leadership buy-in? What, what do I absolutely need to have to make this successful? Well, I think um, leadership is, is obviously key. Um, being able to sort of set the vision for people will always be key. One of the great things about IO Tahoe, though, is you can use your existing staff to do this work if you use uh, our automation platform. There's no need to hire expensive people. Um, IOTAHO is a no-code solution. It works out of the box. Um, you just connect to the source, uh, and then your existing staff uh, can use it. It's very intuitive. It has an easy-to-use uh, user interface. Um, there's no need to invest vast amounts with large consultancies who may well charge you the earth. Um, and you are actually at a bit of an advantage if you've got existing staff who are close to the data, who are subject matter experts, or who use it. Uh, because they can very easily learn how to use the tool uh, and then they can go in and they can write their own data quality rules um, and they can really make a contribution from day one. When we um, go into organizations uh, and, and, we, and we connect, 
one of the, the great things about the whole experience of IO Tahoe is we can get tangible results back within the day. Um, usually within an hour or two, we're able to say, okay, uh, we started to map the relationships here. Here's a data map of the data that we've analyzed. Um, here are some thoughts on where, what your sensitive data is because it's automated, because it's running uh, algorithms across data. Um, and that's what people really should expect. Um, and, and you know this because you're dealing with the ecosystem. Uh, we're entering a new era of, of data and, and many organizations, to your point, they just don't have the resources to do what Google and Amazon and Facebook and Microsoft did over the past decade to become you know, data dominant, you know, trillion dollar market cap companies. Incumbents need to rely on technology companies to bring that automation, that machine intelligence to them so they can apply it. They don't, they don't want to be AI inventors, they want to apply it to their businesses. So, and that's what really was so difficult in the early days of so-called big data. You had this just too much complexity out there. And now companies like IO Tahoe are bringing yeah. you know, tooling and platforms that yeah. are allowing companies to really become data-driven. Your, your final thoughts, please, Yusuf. Yeah, that, that's a great point, David. And in a way, it brings us back to where we began in terms of partnerships and alliances. I completely agree. We're at a really exciting point where we can take applications like IO Tahoe, uh, and we can go into enterprises and help them really leverage uh, the value of these type of machine learning algorithms and, and AI. Um, we work with um, all the major cloud providers, AWS, uh, Microsoft Azure, um, Google Cloud Platform, uh, IBM, Red Hat, uh, and others. Um, and we, we really, I think for us, the key thing is that we want to be the best in the world at enterprise data automation. We don't aspire to be a cloud provider or even a workflow provider, uh, but what we want to do is really help customers uh, with their data, with our automated data functionality, uh, in partnership with some of those other businesses. So we can leverage the great work they've done in the cloud, the great work they've done on workflows, on virtual assistants, um, and in other areas. And we help customers leverage those investments as well. But at our heart, we're really targeted at just being the best um, uh, enterprise data automation business in the world. Massive opportunities, not only for technology companies, but for those organizations get, that can apply technology for business advantage. Yusef Khan, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Brilliant, thank you, Doug. much appreciated. All right, and thank you for watching everybody. We'll be right back right after this short break. <laughs>